It's Tiny Pico USB C time! Yay! Wish I could spin this properly. These are my first panels of Tiny Pico USB C boards. 20 on a board. Let's go stick one of these in the pick and place machine and get it built! And there's the first board of the pick and place machine. Gotta take it off and check it before it goes in the oven. But from just glancing here, it looks pretty good. And here's the first panel, reflowed. Look at that, pretty cool. It's come up really well. So I only had about seven components on the entire panel of 20 that needed fixing. There's about 770 components all up on the panel and it was just an odd assortment of a capacitor or a resistor or maybe my little FET that was sitting funny and I just had to give it a bit of hot air just to put it back into place not bad for the very first pasted panel I put through the oven there was a, an issue with the button over here that I didn't notice it was kind of sitting sideways I noticed after I took it off the conveyor I didn't let it go straight into the oven this first time. I wanted to have a look at it under a microscope just to make sure, but it's come up really well. So I've done a bit of a unique design on this board. I didn't panelize it myself. I still got JLC PCB to panelize it, but the actual design I made included this section here. So if I turn the board over, you'll notice that I've still got V scores by design but I've also got mouse bytes underneath the USB connector. I needed the USB connector to hang over the edge, as you can see, it's a bit of a hangover, but it would have gone into the board on the next side. It would have hit the antenna and the APA, and I didn't want to do that. So I needed a gap, and a gap isn't really a problem, except I didn't want to have to somehow clean up V-scoring underneath the USB connector. I also didn't want to have the PCB sticking out from here like I did on the Feather S2. I wanted uh, people to have the ability to maybe stick this inside a case and have the USB connector stick out the side of the case or sit flush with it. So I opted for mouse bytes over here and then I included this shape inside my board design. So when JLC PCB got it, they got this section here and they treated it like a normal panel that they v-scored. So when I separate this panel I'll be able to separate it from either the v-score here or the mouse bytes and I'll only have to clean three edges of the board. Obviously this edge here I won't have to clean and on this side over here I won't have to clean where the mouse bytes are and everywhere else I'll have an edge here, an edge here and an edge here of v-score to clean. No different to what I have now with my micro b tiny picos but I have to also clean this edge over here with the micro b which is a bit annoying. Now, I did actually make two changes to this design before I made this panel, after I made my prototype. So here's the prototype board that I built that some of you might have seen on a stream. I'll put the link up there somewhere. I've actually squeezed some more passives on. Let's get a little bit closer. So over here we had three resistors and one cap. I've now got my three resistors, a cap, and two more resistors. I'll explain what they are in a moment. I've also added something on the back that people have been asking for for a very long time. I've put a cuttable jumper on the back here for the stat LED. If you are one of the people that get annoyed by the flashing yellow LED on the boards when the charge IC can't tell whether it's charging a battery or not, whether there's a battery present or not, you can cut that jumper over here and disable the LED. And if you ever want it back again, you can just solder the jumper back together again. So that's one change I put on this board, on the USB-C version. But the other one is, these extra passives I put here, they are a voltage divider off the USB 
that connects to IO9, which is an unused pin on the Tiny Pico, and that will allow you to detect if the USB is present. So if IO9 is high, USB is present. If IO9 is low, USB is not present. And because the voltage divider is running off the USB, if you're running off battery and you don't have USB connected, there's no power being pulled by that voltage divider. So two features that people have asked for, the ability to detect if USB is present, and when I say USB, I apologize, the ability to detect if there's five volts coming into the board, if there's five volt power. So whether it's the five volt pin or the USB connected, it's checking to see whether the power is there, not whether USB data is there. So you can detect if there is power there and you can then run a separate set of code or you can detect if there's no power there then you can run another set of code because you're running off battery or off the 3.3 volt pin. Two features that people have been asking for are now available on the USB-C version of my tiny Pico. So now it's time to pull this board apart and clean the edges, test the boards and start preparing if they need to be able to sell them. If you're interested in grabbing one of these USB-C Tiny Picos, let me know in the comments below. I will get a holding place up on my Unexpected Maker shop soon for these to set up a wait list for those that want to put their email addresses in to be notified when I have them available. That might still be a week or so away. So if you are interested, put a comment on this video below. I have a limited number of panels that I've made. There's only 10, so there's only 200 boards I'm going to do on this first run. I will do the rest of this run once I've pulled these apart and tested them all. I'll see how they go, and if the demand is there, I will order some more PCBs and do a larger run. That's it. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks to all my patrons. You're amazing. Until next time, catch you later. Bye.